Ladies and gentlemen, for all you do, that's right, this Bud's for you. Mr. Bud Collins once again. Bud, how are you feeling these days? I, I feel all right. I'm recuperating from a fall, which shattered some, uh, I don't know what it was, but it hurt a lot. And uh, I had quite a bit of surgery for it. Hurts a lot? Did you swear a little bit? I did. I did, absolutely. It was something I'd never done before, and uh, it was really an awful... It's kept me out of action pretty much for a, a year. So I'm making my comeback at this U.S. Open. I don't think I'll play, however. I'm, I'm glad I could come. I couldn't come anymore last year. My doctors kept close strain on me, but the other day I said, well, what do you think? And both of them said, go to New York. We know that's what you want to do. And I... Sir, so said, wow, gee, okay, I'm on my way. We're a kid again. Yeah, it was great fun to see this place, and it gets bigger and better every year. It's not always the case that bigger is better, but they've designed this uh, this Arthur Ashe Canyon, I call it, which is the primary stadium, holds 28,000, which is too many people for a tennis match. Tennis is too gentle in a way, not the way they hit the ball, but just it should have a certain feeling. I went to the uh, the place that when they opened it in 1987. We went up, my wife Anita and I went to the top row, the very top row, and we were scared because you were looking down. It was a very narrow aisle, and there you were, high above New York, or so it seemed anyway. So uh, we thought, don't, won't go there anymore. And we've been lucky that they've issued press tickets to us, so we don't have to go there. But I was thinking, uh, as we watched the match today against uh, Maria Sharapova and uh, the other kid whose name I always forget, Vika Azarenka. Thank you very much. They were, they're pretty strong. And they were hitting every ball as hard as they could. And I was thinking, what would Arthur Ashe, the late Arthur Ashe, think of this kind of tennis? And I think he would have said, hey, girls, learn how to volley once in a while. Don't waste it all on the ground strokes. But this is the new era in tennis, and this is a popular way to play. The strings and the new rackets have made it a baseline game. And I don't like that, really. I like to see more variety in tennis. And uh, fortunately, we saw Ferrer, a Spaniard, and Tipsarevich, Tipsarevich, who was a Serb yesterday in one of the best matches I've ever seen. And they were playing baseline, but they were going into the next county to retrieve. And they were so competitive. They had every shot in the book, and they played and played and played well over four hours. It was just enthralling to watch. It's one of the best matches I've ever seen at this place. And such good sportsmen in the whole thing. So I don't see how that match can be topped. I uh, certainly agree. That was uh, instant classic tennis out there. And, well, we lost perhaps uh, the biggest entertainer with the exception of Djokovic, but we lost Roddick this week, and he seemed to carry that role of being the ambassador, the most popular tennis guy out there with Saturday Night Live, with the American Express, Lexus commercials. What's he meant to the game, and uh, what are we losing in this guy, But I think he, he's meant a lot to the American game, particularly in winning the championship in 03, and there hasn't been an American male winner since. The Williams sisters, of course, take care of everything. But Andy has been the face of American male tennis for a decade, and it was his goal to bring the Davis Cup back to the United States, which was not easy at the end of his decade. They did win the, the United States did win the Davis Cup. So he has meant a lot to the game. He's been a guy who can blow his stack, but two minutes later, he's fine. He's very, very competitive. It was going to say, I worry. I don't think I worry about Andy Roddick. After all, he's married to one of the SI models, Brooklyn Decker, and he's made millions of dollars. So I, I don't worry about him. But on the other hand, I do worry about a guy so young, he's 30 years old, who is out of business, so to speak. What can he do with himself? I don't think he wants to coach. Often, very often in sports, people will retire, and two years later, they've got a head time on their hands, and they unretire. Uh, I don't think somehow Andy will do that, but it's his right, of course. I wrote a column for my website, having a little fun with it. I say, Andy Roddick has retired, but he's still playing. Not many people have pulled that. He won three matches. 
while he was re so-called retired that he had announced. So I think he'll be all right. Uh, I'm hoping that we'll get some more good young Americans out of these uh, development schemes that are started by uh, one of the McEnroe's. John has a, a, an academy for kids, and he seems very set in his way. And strange enough, his brother Patrick is running the development program for the U.S. Tennis Association. Now, I can imagine that there might be clashes between the two brothers. It uh, won't be the first time. No, it won't be the first time at all. And uh, it'll be interesting to watch it and see who does a better job. So one of the two will do a better job than the other, That's I believe. Talking about young Americans, these guys are no longer young, but they're priming. And uh, they have another five years left, I would say. And nobody's more All-American than Mike and Bob Bryan. How good have they been for the game, and are they one of the best doubles teams out there that Mr. Bud Collins has seen? Well, they are certainly one of the best teams ever. Uh, they have won 12 major championships. In winning the U.S. Open doubles today, the two brothers tied a great team from the past, John Newcomb and Tony Roach. 12 major championships. Now, the Bryans are going to win a lot more tournaments than Newcomb and Roach ever won, but they will have tied that record. Now they're going to shoot for one more major, and you know by winning a major means you've won either the Australian, French, Wimbledon, and U.S. So it's not going to be that easy. I was talking to both of them. So you're holding the baby also, bud, running for a governor or a president. Baby, well, I love it. <laughs> Love it to see a baby like that because my stepson has a newborn baby too, and we're we're crazy about it. There's something about a baby that uh, brings out uh, the goodness and the good humor and everything. But uh, Mike and Bob are going to do all right. They said yes, of course they're going to try to break the record, but they also realize in this funny game might never win another tournament. That's quite possible. I don't think it'll happen. Most important thing they've done probably beyond the statistics, beyond who beat whom, is the fact that the Bryans came into the game. They suddenly realized that d doubles was going to be thrown out of the game uh, by the ATP, Association of Tennis Pros, and that would have been a terrible thing. And so they really campaigned. Now, nobody ever had to campaign to be in a sport, I don't think, but the Bryan brothers did it. And doubles has become very, very prominent again. And it should. You and I and everybody else, what do we play now? We don't go out and play singles in the hot... I'm going to challenge you later today, bud, in the little singles. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good one. Today is about 100 degrees. I'm Polish and dumb. I'm just Polish, bud. <laughs> well, I tell you, they're great kids, both of them. They always have been. Uh, they were raised to be tennis players. They... Uh, came to a Davis Cup match when they, their father brought them in uh, California and they they met the players and that was a thrill for these boys and then they decided they were going to make a career out of doubles. You, know, you talked about the crusade that Mike and Bob were on bringing back doubles. They certainly brought it back more than it was when it was being questioned. They've made so many major contributions. But they were very fortunate to do this as a family because Father Wayne, Coach Wayne, was a spearhead right in there with them. How good of an ambassador and how strong of a contribution has Wayne made to this current game of tennis? Well, I think he's done a lot because he has had a camp for tennis kids. He watched over his own boys. You know, their mother was a top 10 women's player back in the amateur days. So probably mom and pop together had a lot to say about the kids. And the funny thing what was about them was they got so they couldn't watch the kids play. They just said, well, you get good luck. <laughs> let us know what happened. Never let them play a final either, I understand, bud. Yeah, you're right. But but they're just, a, it's a terrific team. It will do more to bring back doubles because I think the doubles, it's a much more entertaining game to watch, I think, anyway. You used to like the mixed doubles, and you would win national championships, indoor championships, outdoor championships in mixed doubles. So you know what you're talking about in doubles. It's hard for the two of us to get together and not talk Fed tennis. 
Roger Federer just looked a little flat the other night. What was your evaluation? And he's had a good year, but he didn't have it the other night. Had a very good year, and I couldn't believe how badly he played. I couldn't. I think his, his, his thought processes weren't with him because he never tried to come to the net. He's a good volleyer. And even if you might lose a few points, Berdick knew what was coming all the time. So uh, I don't know if you feel that way. You are a tennis pro, of course. But I thought, I kept thinking, when is Roger going to give us a couple of looks at a good volley or a good uh, drop shot or something like that? He never did. Totally agree with that. And when he takes that all-court game, it does chip and charge occasionally. and does serve and volley at times. He can actually take apart anyone's rhythm, but he stayed back and didn't play his full game. I uh, I was disappointed. And when I saw him come back in the third set, I thought there was life, but he was the hole was too big. Yeah, it, it shows you, I suppose, if you're a hacker. <laughs> don't play with your term, Bud Collins, hacker. Down at the colony. That's true, but you've got to try something different if you're losing. It's as simple as that. Bill Tilden said, always do something different in a losing game and never change a winning game. So that was from Tilden back in the 1920s. But I, I felt a little sorry for uh, Roger. I thought he was going to win the tournament. It just shows you that no matter how good an athlete is, they stumble sometimes. One more question, but we've got Davis Cup coming. Can the U.S. take this one? We're not going to have to play against Nadal, so it should be a fairly even match going in. Well, they're lucky that Nadal won't play, but uh, the Spaniards still have some pretty good players, and there's no getting around it. So you have to, the the United States must win the doubles. That's got to be a must, otherwise they're gone. They could do it. They surprised us when they beat Switzerland. Haven't beat the Spaniards since 1972 so goodness 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 yeah that's a long time ago that was with stan smith and harold solomon the americans went on to win the davis cup over romania stan's here this weekend did you spend a little time with him and reminisce i didn't i didn't see him i don't look for you well i'll find him don't worry i'll see him because he's now the president of the international tennis hall of fame in newport rhode island so he'll be more active and i'll see him but always a pleasure to spend some time with you off the courts and soon back on the courts bud collins yes indeed for all you do ladies and gentlemen bud collins this bud's for you very much we'll do it again soon 